Hello everybody, continuing my series on game dev tools, I was approached by Cyberman to take a look at his Tweenline 2, a game maker engine for tween based animations. So what is a tween? Because you'll be hearing that a lot in this video. It's short for in between and in an animation context that refers to the frames in between a start pose and an end pose. If you ever did anything with Flash, you're probably familiar with motion tweening, where Flash could automatically fill in the gaps between two keyframes. That's what Tweenline lets you do in Game Maker, as well as including every kind of easing you can imagine to let you create smooth acceleration, deceleration and even bounces and other complex movements. The line part of Tweenline comes from its timeline features, not timeline in the game maker resource sense of the word, but timeline in the uh, tweenline sense of the word. You can set up multiple tweens to happen one after the other, and you define all this just by calling scripts and passing arguments. You have crazy amounts of control over the stuff and can pause, reverse, seek and manipulate tweens any way you want, creating a super powerful way to manage animations. Not just animations too, you can tween any variable between one value and another, which you might think of as a more powerful, albeit highly more complex version of the famous approach script. I could go on about this thing's features for a while because it has a lot of little niceties and extras like being able to pass through an array of things to tween and a function call and so on, but we'd be here a while if I tried to list everything. So that's more or less what it does. But is it good? Well that's a complex question. I found tweenline to be both easy and kind of difficult to use. It's managed through a controller object which calls initialization scripts, but it tells you not to place that object in a game room, which left me initially to wonder how does any of the stuff in the initialization object get called? Uh, turns out extensions can actually initialize themselves just by being in the project. And this is really cool, but also something pretty niche and something I didn't know as a fairly experienced user. Uh, so it would have been nice if the object docs or readme had explained why I didn't have to place the object in the game world, so I didn't have to go on and search for an answer. Digging into the code a little revealed that it wouldn't matter if you did include it in the room, which was a pleasant redundancy to discover and kind of demonstrated a desire from the engine and the developer uh, to create something that looked after itself and that you could kind of fire and forget with and I think it does a good job with that all around. Anyway, actually using tweenline to tween things is pretty straightforward. You type tween2, you list the instance, uh, the duration and the things in that instance that you want to tween and what you want to tween them to and you're pretty much good. You can then save that tween's ID in a variable and pause it, play it and do whatever you want with it. Even the timeline stuff is fairly simple to use when you know how. You just add a sequence of tweens to the tween line and watch them happen. You can then pause, reverse, or loop the tween line in the same way. The documentation and sheer volume of scripts included make using this thing seem much more complex than it actually kind of is. The documentation is thorough but not always well written, and argument names are sometimes confusing, and some sections of it are out of date. Just like some other documents and some other stupid program. So it did take a little guesswork to work out what I was doing with more complex functions. However, the getting started page is pretty good and you get most of what you need from there in order to, uh, get started. So is it good? Well, it does come with probably way too many scripts. My biggest complaint is that there are so many extraneous generically named scripts. Many of these are important behind the scenes functions used by the engine, not designed for the end user and which are not prefixed as such and not folded away in a not for the user folder, leading to user confusion and worse potential naming conflicts across projects. Some of these functions however it seems are included for the user and it can be hard to tell what is and isn't designed for you to use other than through reading all of the comments and docs. What's unusual is that there is a script folder specifically for private functions which are properly prefixed and sealed away, easily ignored and that's good. And I wonder why some scripts, which clearly state not for use by the user, were not included in here. None of this is a deal breaker, especially not if you're willing to put in some work cleaning up the scripts into a neat package yourself, but as it ships I find it a tiny bit unwelcoming and difficult to want to carry from project to project right out of the box. Which is a shame because it feels like the underlying selling point and main practical elements of this engine are really really great and super elegant to use. So despite that, it's good then? It's very powerful and it claims to be very fast. I don't have the means to easily put this to the test in reasonable development conditions, but regardless of its speed as compared to other engines of its sort, using an engine like this is always going to carry a little bit of weight. 
Easing and approaches can often be easily achieved with one-liners and helper scripts, and if you don't need a lot of this stuff for your project, this can kind of feel a bit overkill. However, if you do want a lot of this kind of thing, and it does go without saying that these kinds of smooth transitions and effects can add so much pop, bang, and feel to a game, I reckon this thing is an absolute steal at just $12 on the marketplace for the amount of sheer work that's gone into it, and the elegance of using it. Sounds like you're saying it's good! Uh, yeah, it's good. This video was brought to you by these lovely people, my Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash seanjs. If you want to get access to my videos early, see other behind the scenes stuff, and generally just help me do what I do, you can head over there yourself and check it out. Huge shout outs in particular and in no particular order to the following, Bowser the Dog, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Dan, Eric Matthew Hibbs, Jason McMillan, Joseph Wetmore, Kimo Savalampi, Mark Lintz, Martin Barasevic, Matt Coat. Michael Ward, Owen Morgan, Patrick Guffey, Relentless Rex, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Stephen Hagen, and Zinan May. Without these people, none of my videos would exist, so shoutouts to them, shoutouts to you for watching, shoutouts to you for liking, subscribing, all those other cool things you people do, and I'll catch you all next time.